Hey folks, this video was a quest from start to finish. Me looking for a natural cure for poison ivy. We've got a rainy day in Appalachia. Now join me on this quest, because it was fun. Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. Most people go out of their way not to get poison ivy. In this video, I'm gonna go out of my way to get poison ivy, and then I'm gonna cure myself. Here's how we're gonna do it. Poison ivy gives you the allergic reaction breaking out because of its oil. So let's get some oil right here on this tree and basically everywhere on my property that you want to go. Poison ivy is growing. I'm going to cut this vine like this and I'm going to remove this stem. The leaves have the oil which you can get by brushing against it but if you want the potent good delicious good <laughs> amazing potency you want to cut that that right there has got some juice and that's the thickest oil that right there will give you poison ivy in the dead of winter when the leaves are gone you can't even tell it's poison ivy anymore it'll still give you poison ivy you could dig in the dirt i've done it in the winter time digging in the dirt planting something get poison ivy because of the roots now the most tender part of your arm where you can get poison ivy is right here. Now, I'll show you. I don't have poison ivy on my arm right now, but I will. And I know this because I get it so easy. So I'm gonna just daub that oil right there. I'm gonna turn it over and get that. There's plenty of oil. I have cut large, large vines. It'll get that big around. And I have cut large vines of it that splattered me as I was cutting and end up having to go for prednisone, which is a steroid that they give you so many a day and you take one less every day until the last day you take one and you're done and it clears it up. But before long, I'm gonna have poison ivy breaking out on this arm. And I'm excited about that because I wanna show you how to cure it all over this area where I am right now, there is a weed growing, and I'm just gonna cut some and show you. It's called jewel weed. Jewel weed is widely known as a poison ivy cure, so let's try it out. I used to think it wasn't so great because when you pick it, you rub it on, it doesn't didn't seem to really have that good of an effect. Recently, I was working for a couple of people about an hour away, subscribers of the channel. Miss April told me, you take this stuff and you cut it up and you heat it in olive oil. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a tincture with this jewel weed and we're gonna make it work. Now, something came in and, and ate the tops off a lot of this jewel weed. Just bit it right off. And I don't know if that was probably deer. I would say it was probably deer, but there's a few here that still have the tops on. I'll show you how to tell. Here's a good telltale sign. See those blooms? Those are jewelweed blooms. This is a very good example of jewelweed right here. It has sort of a, a juicy stalk. The leaves are shaped like this. But that orange bloom is one of the primary ways to tell it. I'm gonna cut some of this. Just about like so. We're going to take the blooms, the leaves, and everything. We're going to find us a stump where we can set our pan on, and we're going to chop this up in there. All right, here's a stump. Make sure there's no dirt in there. Here's our jewel weed, and I want to show you what I'm going to do. Now, it's not a huge pan, not all that big. But I'm going to line the stems up. I'm going to take pruning shears, and I'm just going to cut them in little pieces. The smaller you cut it, the better the oil can extract the part that fights the poison ivy. I honestly don't know what the active ingredient is, but I'm excited to try this out. As you go up, the stems get smaller and you start getting more and more leaves in it. Not a problem. Look at that. I love it. And you could do this with a knife on a cutting board. It would work just as well. 
I'm just going to mash it in so that I can fit the rest of it. A full pot of jewelweed. You can do this in a crock pot, and I guess I would recommend to you to do it in a crock pot if you have electricity, and that's the way you roll the crock pot. You put it on low, let it stay right there for two hours. I'm going to take this to the wood stove, and I'm going to make for sure it doesn't get over 200 degrees. It doesn't need to boil. It just needs to get warm. And release the oils from this plant into the olive oil. And you want to make sure that you have a real olive oil. You, the majority of olive oils are not real olive oil in the United States, unfortunately. Get you one that says extra virgin olive oil, organic if you can find it, and then you'll know what you that you've got the real deal. So let's get this to the house while I'm getting ready to break out in poison ivy. And let's get this done because I need it pretty soon. All right, we've got our oil here. We've got our jewelweed here. We've got our stove here. Now I got my fire going. I don't need a big fire. So I just went ahead and settled on a small fire. And if I wanted to boil something, I would put it over the fire. But I don't want to boil it. I'm going to put it away from the fire on a trivet. Just like that right there. Warm to the touch. Now, this is our extra virgin olive oil. <clears throat> there we go. There's not a whole lot left here. And I'm going to pour it all in. Now, you want to cover this in oil. As it cooks down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down in. Look at that. That's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now, we're just going to put the lid on it. Put it on the trivet. Let it get up to about 200 degrees. We're gonna let it stay right there for two hours. All right, it's been exactly two hours. Get me a pot holder here. This right here is absolutely perfect. Look how it cooked it down. Cooked it right down. I don't know if it would hurt to let it stay in there longer or not but it seems like it should be done so i have this strainer right here i've got this right here is a pourable i can strain it into there and then i can pour it in my jar so i'm going to strain it out look at that color it's green looking i think that's the way it's supposed to look i'm just going to mash it out it's a little bit hot on the fingers get me a ladle here look at that beautiful all right i've got my tincture here i've got a dark jar small bottle and i'm just going to pour it in here and you can see that green color that shows you right there you got the good out of that plant and it's not terribly cloudy it's got a little bit of cloudiness but it's fairly clear looking and beautiful and i'm telling you that right there it's up to right there on my bottle so i'm very very excited we're ready for poison ivy this place on my arm where i put that poison ivy oil is not breaking out too quick so we'll see if it breaks out this is the first time in my life I ever hoped that poison ivy would break out on my arm. Let's see if it will. All right, it took seven hours, but the deed finally was done. I, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't breaking out. I even went and got a leaf and rubbed on there to make sure, but where I'm breaking out is not from a leaf. This is exactly from that stem that I cut and I put the oil directly on my arm. Am I crazy for giving myself poison ivy? Of course I am. There's no question. And that's a that's a dose and a half right there. That right there is coming up in a welt so powerful. It's just a solid welt. Now, I've got my jewelweed tincture. My wife labeled it for me. Always label stuff because once it gets in that bottle, you don't know what in the world it is especially if you make very much stuff. Now this bottle is not a dropper bottle, so we're just gonna shake it, get it on our finger, and we're gonna dab it on, just like that. Now I'm gonna 
I used a leaf all over this area that's turning red. So I'm gonna do all of it. Who remembers Camphophonique? That's a old, old thing. My mom put many a doses of that on my chicken bites as a child. This don't smell anything like Camphophonique, but I'm using it in the same method. Is, the itching has subsided immediately now. It's not gonna go away all at once because this is a natural remedy. But I'll tell you the honest truth. With poison ivy, you can't buy anything over the counter that knocks it out like that. Now this here is a pretty good size of bubble. This ain't just a spot. Usually when you get into it lightly, you'll get a little spot here, a little spot there. This here will work wonders on that. Let's take a little time and watch this here and see what happens with the, this big bubble. Well, the crazy itching is has stopped. I'm trying to show you that bump there. That is a tall order to ask, this tincture to stop in its tracks because that is a volcano about to erupt. That is no small little amount of poison ivy and those of you that know poison ivy well know i'm asking a lot of my tincture if it can knock that completely out that's almost miraculous and you see the little bumps around there they're calming down quite well and literally it's not itching that's a huge thing it was starting to drive me nuts and if you have had much poison ivy you know those big whelps that it's like a bunch of little bumps merging together to form one giant whelp. That's what we've got going on here. And of course, there are bigger ones out there. This one would have turned into no telling what if I would just itch it and give it time. It was about to explode. Jewel weed. Seems like it's going to work. Let's just monitor it for a little while longer. Okay, it has continued to calm down over the last 30 minutes. And the big old welt is slowly going down. It's still there, and I know if I let it dry out and I scratch it, boom, it's gonna bloom. So what I do is about every so often, my thumb is big enough to completely seal this off and I can turn it upside down, get some on it. And then what I do is set it right over that bump and get it completely coated. And I've got a couple little bumps here and there starting to pop up from that other episode just sort of doctoring them as well so in 30 minutes or thereabouts i'll check back in with you and we'll see if there's been any change in this welt okay it's been about 45 minutes since we last spoke the bump is still there but it has very visibly receded and the, there's no itching whatsoever i'm going to touch it it doesn't even itch when i touch it I'm not gonna to touch it a lot because that's just gonna inflame it. Matter of fact, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more on it because it's not gone yet. Well, overnight it flared up on me, as you can see. That's very common because it gets kind of warm and you sleep at night and you don't know when you're gonna scratch it. I probably scratched it in my sleep. But I've re-doctored it this morning and it's already starting to calm back okay, down. Okay, this is the third day. I had a rough night, I'll just be honest with you. And the jewel weed tincture with the oil stopped having much effect. It felt like, now I know it would have exploded a lot faster had I not had it, but I wasn't getting it under control. And before midnight, it had me awake and I could. it felt like it was shooting out little tentacles gaining new ground so i reverted back to what i've always used and what has been my go-to for poison ivy for years and that is witch hazel it it feels like water it looks like water but it definitely calms it down and it's quite calm now compared to what it was in the night although still visible still itches so it's time to try something else this past sunday afternoon I was eating with my pastor and his wife, and she said that a lot of times the oil-based tincture doesn't work so great if you have a bad bout of it. 
but you need to use water base. Just make a tea with it and try that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. It is time to do that. And I noticed I got jewelweed growing all in this brush pile here. The birds are competing with me, but that ain't a bad problem to have. I'm gonna cut this right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the, the oil one. I'm just gonna cut it all up. We're gonna try it out and see how it works. Got all the jewel weed used that was growing right here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go take water, cover this over, get it cooking. As it cooks down, I'm going to add more to it and add more to it. I wanna make this as potent as I can to see if I can't knock this poison ivy out with jewel weed. Let's do it. took this metal, what do you call this, a dipper? It's like a half pot, half dipper. I went ahead and dipped out some of the juice off of that tea. Now it's still on the stove and it's still hot, but I wanted to get some off and use now. My actual inflammation has calmed down a little bit. It's softer. When it gets really tight and really hard, that's when you got a problem. I got one spot right here, about the half the size of a nickel. It's trying to do something. Now, I kind of like the water aspect in that. It's really not limited by funds or anything. It's, it's almost a limitless supply. You can just keep putting more in, keep making more tea. And it's not oily and greasy. I'm just trying it out here. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's nice to have the bottle, the nice little dropper bottle and all that with the oil. And if that had knocked it out for me, that's where I'd be staying. But I'm going to just sit here with this for a while. And I'm just going to keep putting it on, letting it dry, and then reapplying it some more and see what happens. I've got to get this under control because if I go through another night of expansion, my whole arm's gonna be took over. And if it don't work, I heard of another old remedy that a man, an old East Tennessee man gave, and I'll be pulling that out of the hat right away. Okay, after fooling with this for about an hour, it is becoming very evident that this is not calming the situation if anything, it is beginning to feel like it is inflaming worse. The witch hazel had the opposite effect. It was doing its job, slowly fixing it. So, it's time to go to plan B, C, or D. I can't remember how far I've come. I think we're on D. Let's go try the old timers fix. There was an old man lived long ago back in the East Tennessee mountain somewhere. And he said, if you've got poison ivy, build you a good hot fire, take you some green cedar and lay on that fire and that's gonna smoke. Stick your arm over that and let that smoke get all on it. And he said, it'll turn red as a turkey's snood and you won't have no poison ivy. It'll take care of it. That sounds that don't sound right. I don't know that I, I mean, it's already red as a turkey snood. <laughs> but I'm going to try it. <laughs> I've already given myself poison ivy intentionally. What else could, I, could go wrong? <laughs> All 
All right, we got the fire going. I'll just show you my arm here. It got worse after I used that tea and itches worse. So I think it's time to do something. what he said to do I cannot do any better this is beautiful it's exactly what he said to do he ought to be proud of me it's gonna be interesting to see if it turns red as a turkey snood This is a, a pretty decent case of poison ivy. It's all located in a two, two and a half inch circle. So it's not widespread yet, but it's on its way to being pretty bad. It's getting a little hot. Fire's taking over. The majority of the Sappy smoke is gone. Wow, that did something. <laughs> that did something. There is a lot of liquid there. Wow, let me show you what it looks like. That has got some serious sap or some kind of smoky smoky uh i don't know moisture on there i'll tell you one thing it feels better but that don't mean anything yet i may do it again just to give it a double dose some more i sort of subscribe to the theory if a little bit's good a whole lot better i don't say necessarily that I subscribe to that theory because it's not supposed to be true but in action what I actually do I guess I subscribe to that theory it was kind of an amazing feeling could almost get addictive let's do this again it's beautiful Yeah, let her rip, tater chip, let's have it. Put it on me. This is round two with the smoke. I just found out about this today. My mechanic. Mr. Steve up there at T&M Automotive. That guy has, is a wealth of knowledge. Let me tell you, that man is a wealth of knowledge. He told me about this. Told me about Mr. Stewart. Told me about the whole kit and caboodle. I'm going to rearrange this stuff and get a little more smoke out of it. 
Look at that. If that's what you want, that's beautiful. When it flames up, it gets a little bit too hot. Look at that. Just kind of knock them flames out. The fish don't cure what ails you, I don't know what will. <laughs> Okay, that was round two with it. It feels incredible again. I don't know if it's just the relief from not being burning over a fire or what, but it does feel better. Now, I don't know about you, but it's time for me to do some research. Just how red is a turkey snood? <laughs> hey Siri, how red is a turkey's snood? Upon further review, we find that a turkey snood can be any color between blue to red. It could be pink, it could be grayish, it could be whitish, it could be bluish, and it could be red. So I guess this is as red as a turkey snood. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to go about our day and see if it goes away. According to Mr. Alex Stewart, it should be done. Other than smelling like a smoked turkey snood, I feel pretty good. Yes, I'm just gonna have to give you an update in a little while. Okay, it's been a few hours. The itch has never come back. It is not itching at all. And as you can see, it's not red as a turkey snood anymore. It is pretty much completely cleared up. I cannot believe it. What I'm gonna do, before I close out this video, I'm gonna spend one more night, because night is the worst. If you're bad with poison ivy, you know, at night it explodes. First thing in the morning, I'm gonna update you on my condition and close out this video. I'm already blown away. So I've got a bunch of tea I'd sell cheap. All right, this is the next morning. And as you can tell, I'm not gonna be building no fire outside, at least not right away. So my update for the night. I got woke up about 2.16. That's what time I got woke up with a severely itching poison ivy arm. So what I did, I got my trusty witch hazel. Woo -wee. And I doctored myself with it for about 10 or 15 minutes, just constantly putting it on, letting it sort of dry, putting it on and it calmed it right down. I went back to sleep and slept till five o'clock. So that's pretty good. So I really need to, to touch it back up with the smoke, with the cedar smoke. That was the most amazing thing I ever tried. It worked amazingly well. We've got some serious lightning and thunder going on here. But anyway, whenever this rain lights up, I'm gonna get a fire. Come on, that was ground. That was cloud to ground lightning right there, and it was boom, 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 boom. I might ought to get back to the house. Let's hope this rain stops and gives me a chance to get a fire built. I could always cut some green cedar and throw it in a wood stove and let the smoke roll out of it, I guess.
was supposed to stop hasn't stopped. It let up a little. You can at least hear me talk now, but it hasn't stopped. So we're gonna build the fire under this roof because I need a little relief, let's be honest. I've been managing it with the witch hazel. The witch hazel has helped me somewhat maintain a status quo, but it's not going away and I have to continually do it. The actual, if you look at the tiny dots where the actual rash is, goes from about here to about here. The epicenter, the bad, bad boy is right here. But the nice thing about the smoking is you can just smoke this. It's all gonna get smoked anyway. Last night I smelled like a smoked ham. Today, Frank didn't make it over here because of the downpour and the flooding. And I can hear the jokes already, but the truth is he's not here. So my arm is not in danger and I'm not salting it before I smoke it. So it's okay, don't worry, everything will be all right. Let's build a fire and let's get my arm smoked. smoking my arm. Look who shows up. I promise you, son, I'm not bacon. You're I'm not, not ham. You can't have this. This is mine. I know you like to come over and get my bacon, but my goodness, this is going beyond <laughs> and above and beyond. <laughs> Look here, son. This is red cedar. It won't even taste good. Son, I gotta go do dishes, son. Bob, I need help. Oh, man, he's trying to eat my arm off. <laughs> I can't believe it. He showed up as soon as I got to smoke it myself. <laughs> I can't believe it. I could. I would have paid him to come over at that time, and he done it. Oh, take these little green cedars, lay it all over that fire, and just kind of put that bark on there. That that stifles that fire, and then more smoke comes back, maximizing your cedar that way. Look at that, Matt. Wow. Don't that look good? Mm -hmm. Looks like I'm smoking a ham or a bacon. Yep. Yummy. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Is that red as a turkey snood? Yeah. Until it's red as a turkey snood, it's not done. <laughs> I think it's red as a turkey snood myself. 
But I tell you what, folks, this is the most amazing thing. Yesterday, I fought with this all day long. And when I did that, it was out like a light, and I didn't even feel another itch till it woke me up at 2.16. 2.16 this morning. So, I had I couldn't come out and build a fire at that point. I just dealt with it with my winch hazel. But now, I've done it again. At any point, if it starts itching, I can do it again and it knocks it out. It's amazing how it knocks it out. There's no itch. And yesterday, I had to take a shower because we had to take my daughter out. The whole family went out for her 20th birthday. So I didn't want to go smelling like a smoked sausage, so I took a shower, but I did not let this arm get wet. I left it on there. So instead of smelling like a smoked sausage, I smelled like a chain smoker, but that was okay. So anyway, there is no doubt in my mind that this is the best cure for poison ivy that I've found. Just as the jewel weed worked in perfection for my friend April, and it didn't work perfection for me, could have been the way I did it, but also results vary. Blah, 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 blah. Results are gonna vary. So I can't promise you it's gonna work for you doing this method, but I have a lot higher hopes that it does because this particular three inch section right here is bad to the bone. It is not just your typical average everyday poison ivy case because I daubed the pure oil right on it. It was, it was unbelievable and it wasn't very smart, but it was, it was uh, you know, a test. Science moves forward because of people like me. <laughs> but anyway, it has calmed right down. It's gonna be fine. I think it's time for me to close this video out. This video is, has already gone on long enough, but right here, folks, is the way to do it. This method right here creates some kind of oil, and I'm telling you what, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's chasing me around. So I'm gonna have to get out of here. I know why you come over. It wasn't for my arm. You come over for coffee. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't get that money, son. Did we get baking your arm first? Why am I baking my arm? Yeah. Well, I just thought I'd try it since you weren't here, see if it'd get you over here. Yeah. It worked know. like a charm, son. Yeah, but you know what, son? What, son? Don't tell me something off the wall, I'm son. I'm not telling you something off the wall. You could not believe that it washed out again. I know it washed out again. It is that deep. I know. Did it wash over your uh, culvert up there by the it house? Did, uh, it didn't come back over it again. It huh? did. I the knew it would. The water came back over. Uh -huh. And uh, down there, it did over by between here, man, uh, the green. I know it, son. It bad. I was thinking to come, son, but it went to light. Well, I know it was dangerous. I knew you wouldn't come. And I was going to come, but I, when mm -hmm. I went down there, Water, over. where, where mm -hmm. I go in out, mm -hmm. it's over shooty. Yeah, and and I'm telling you, that's why I built the fire and smoked my arm. I knew you wasn't coming. Why are you done that? Because you knew I was coming. Oh, ain't he sweet? Hey, ain't he sweet? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. I say try anything and see what it what works the best. But I'm gonna say this here will be your ticket. Well, that's all we got for you today. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.